Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Cat Tribal 3.0. All right, guys, you have been patiently waiting for this new updated deck tech. Uh, it's kind of changed a little bit uh, from the past two, from Amonkhet to Our Devastation. And now with Ixalan, we have a ton of new cards to put into the deck to make it that much better. But I would like to say kind of a caveat before I actually go through the deck tech. Uh, I was going to be posting this today uh, anyway, but uh, Saffron Olive over on uh, MTG Goldfish posted his list of Cat Tribal and his update, and it's eerily similar uh, to our lists. And I kind of posted on Twitter, I was like, I don't know what to do. Should I make this? video? Should I not make this video? And then Saffron was like, hey, I just got you back, man. And I was like, oh, dude, awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And here's the deck. But of course, before I get into the deck tech, make sure to hit the like on the video if you like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell right beside the subscription button to know when we make a new video on the channel and when we go live on stream right here on YouTube. But without further ado, let's get right into it with four Sacred Cat, a one mana one one life linker with Embalm. Sacred Cat is one of the best cats in the format, one of the best ways to come back and gain some life and one of the best ways to kind of hold off an attack from an aggressive opponent. While Sacred Cat alone may not seem like much, because this is a uh, cat tribal deck, a Sacred Cat can come out as a 2-2 or a 3-3 or even 4-4 sometimes, thanks to other pump spells in the deck. But moving on from Sacred Cat, we have four Adorn Pouncer, another ridiculous card for us, a two mana 1-1 one, one with double strike and eternalize for five, coming back as a 4-4 double striker. Again, because we have things like Regal Caracol and other uh, pump spells, this can come in as a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, and have lifelink as well, so it's just ridiculous. Adorn Pouncer is a great way to actually uh, kind of elongate the game a lot longer than you realize, uh, but it's super fun. It can actually end a game by itself sometimes, uh, but without any kind of removal heading its way, it's going to definitely rock some opponent's world. Moving up from Adorn Pouncer, we have four Metallic Mimic. You know this is a travel deck, you know I couldn't not include this. Uh, now there was a slot here for a Long Tusk Cub, and I decided to go against that and go for a Metallic Mimic instead. I like Long Tusk Cub, but we have no energy other than the Long Tusk Cub in the actual deck itself. Itself. Uh, we could have put in some Aether Hubs to kind of help that energy kind of go on, but I think Metallic Mimic, even though we don't get like a cat trigger uh, from Vanquisher's Banner, things like that, Metallic Mimic is still going to be great for us coming down as a cat, having us draw cards when we cast a creature, and as well as giving us plus one plus one counters on other cats that come onto the board. And since you know this is an MTGO deck, uh, Metallic Mimic is actually kind of under budget too. <laughs> uh, on paper, it's more expensive, obviously, but here we can actually put it in and it'd, it'd be like a budget deck, which is awesome. Moving on from Metallic Mimic, though, we have four. Pride Sovereign, a 3 mana 2-2 two, two cat. It gets plus one plus one for each other cat you control. And then it also has pay one white and tap it. Exert Pride Sovereign, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. So Pride Sovereign is a token producer, but at the mid to late game, it, it can actually just be a giant bomb for us, coming in as a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, with lifelink if we have a Caracal on the battlefield. So Pride Sovereign is very good for us. It's kind of our pseudo secondary win condition besides a Caracal or besides an Adorn Pouncer. And of course, if we don't need it for the firepower, we can just definitely go wide with it and make our 1-1 one, one cats. Moving up from Pride Sovereign, though, we have four Prowling Subpoppered, a three mana 4-3 cat snake. Prowling Subpoppered can't be countered. Creature spells you control can't be countered. So there are a lot of control decks in the format right now, and having a four of in the main board here is almost like a necessity. <laughs> Prowling Subpoppered is ridiculously powerful. Uh, if you want to hold out till turn three and cast a Prowling Subpoppered, or hold out till turn four, cast a Prowling Subpoppered, then hold up a uh, Blossoming Defense, which is also in the deck, uh, for some safety uh, measures, uh, I think that's absolutely doable. Again, the Subpoppered is going to help us kind of stabilize our board, get out creatures underneath or over, I guess, uh, a control strategies to make sure we can kind of keep our creatures base going. Uh, to make sure that we can actually win the match. Because again, there are like, what, three or four different types of control decks in standard right now. We have black-blue control, we have Grixis control, we have blue-white control, and then we have also like red-white control, black-white control. I mean, there's just like so many kinds of, there are so many kinds of decks and so much removal in the format uh, that Prowling Subpopper needs to be a four of in the main board here. Moving up from Prowling Subpopper, though, we have four Rico Caracol. This is our big daddy cat here. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink, which is incredibly important. When Rico Caracol enters the battlefield, create two one one white cat tokens with lifelink. It's a 3-3 that makes two 1-1s one that are actually 2-2s. Two so it also gives the, our entire board lifelink, so if we're down a lot of life and we have a Caracol out and we have some cats on our side of the field, we can actually get in for some life gain and actually kind of come back from the dead, rather, and hopefully get a win for the match. But that is all the creatures in the deck. We have 24 total. Uh, again, the, the, the creature curve is actually pretty decent for us, uh, but one of the things, of course, that people are missing here is the Long Tusk Cub that they really like, and I really like it too, uh, but I think Metallic Mimic in this actual deck here is a little bit better for us. Moving on to spells though, we have three Blossoming 
defense because we can't not include this against all of the removal that's going on in the format. One mana instant, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains hexproof until end of turn. This is a great way to trade up on a creature. This is a great way to make sure that a fatal push does not hit our creature for that turn. It's just a fantastic card for us and always going to be a three of, um, if not four of, depending on the meta you're fighting against. Moving on to artifacts though, we have two Lifecrafters Bestiary. It is a three mana artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. So Lifecrafters is actually, I think, in, has been in every iteration of Cat Tribal that I've had so far, and it's a fantastic card. Because we have so many great cats that are coming out for super cheap, a Lifecrafter is going to help us scry one at the beginning of our upkeep and also draw some cards to give us some extra value to kind of go towards the mid to late game of the match so we can continue to play out our lands, continue to play out our bombs, and just kind of continue to play out our board. Next up though, in Artifacts that was a new card, we have two Vanquisher's Banner, a five mana artifact. As Vanquisher's Banner enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, which will choose cats. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one, which is a great anthem ability. But whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. So Vanquisher's Banner is actually quite good for us because it helps us like, again, gain that card advantage in the mid to late game to kind of outlast an opponent. Uh, now, one thing I will say is um, having a Vanquisher's Banner and a Lifecrafter Bestiary on the battlefield can almost mill you to death. So you want to be kind of careful of that. But Vanquisher's Banner is super good, super fun. The only downside is Metallic Mimic does not get the uh, kind of advantage of Vanquisher's Banner because it comes in as a shapeshifter. And while it enters the battlefield as a cat, and we do get that buff from the cat itself, uh, the actual casting ability of Metallic Mimic does not count, which is kind of sad. But moving on to enchantments, we have two Shaper's Sanctuary. I kept saying Shaper's of Nature in the last video, I don't know why, but I was mentioning Shaper's Sanctuary. A one mana enchantment, whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. So this is a great way to uh, go up against a heavy removal deck, a Rakdos deck, or a Ramnap Red deck, where they have a lot of great spot removal, harness lightnings, fatal pushes, things like that, unlicensed disintegration. If they're sending it towards our creatures, we have a one mana enchantment that gives us the ability to draw a card off of that. So if they decide to do that to us, we can still Blossoming Defense and still get the card draw off of Shaper's Sanctuary, which is actually quite good too. But again, if we have all three of these out, we can kind of mill ourselves to death if we're not too careful. So we want to make sure that we kind of play these at the most opportune time for us so we can get our board out as quickly as possible. But moving on from Saber Sanctuary, we have three more cast out. Uh, this is a four mana enchantment flash. When cast out enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until cast out leaves the battlefield. And of course, cycling for one white mana. This is again, premium removal in white. It's probably gonna be in every white deck that I make <laughs> until rotation. Uh, it's just a fantastic card. And it's probably been in the deck since Amonkhet's release, obviously. And thanks to cards like uh, the Scarab God uh, and Hazaret, things like that, cast out is a must include in the main board. Because Black Blue has a hard time dealing with uh, enchantments, this is gonna be a great hard removal spell uh, for a uh, Scarab God, and even probably for the Ramnap Red deck for uh, Hazaret there. So it's just a great way to deal with them when we don't have a way to deal with them. But that is it for the cards in the main board. Let's go over the lands real quick. We have three Field of Ruin, because uh, Search for Ascanta, when it flips, can be a real pain in the butt. Uh, I kind of have been t telling people that ever since, um, I guess, like, since it's came out. But I think now, since there are so many control decks in the format, you're seeing almost three or four ofs in their main board, and Search for Ascanda needs to be dealt with as quickly as possible. That's why we have three Field of Ruin in the uh, in the land base right here. And also, in the Abzan token strategy, we wanted to be dealing with the, uh, the flipped white legendary land as well, because that is a token producer too. Uh, but yeah, Field of Ruin is amazing, and it's going to be in the deck always, and probably in every single deck until rotation of Search for Ascanda, because that card is crazy. Um, please ban it. <laughs> No, it's fine. Moving on from Field of Ruin though, we have two Scattered Grove. This is gonna be a great card to come in for cycling, but also a great card for us for green and white mana. But most of the time, Scattered Grove is just gonna be used as a cycling card, as it does come in slowly as a tap land. So there are some lists in here that had three or four of. I think just a two of here is fine because I don't wanna get into this in the early game because getting into this in the early game really slows down our strategy and makes sure that we're actually gonna be basically behind a turn on how we play out our deck. So I think cycling for this is gonna be great, uh, but I think also if we really need it, we can use it as a tap land. Moving on from Scattered Grove though, we have three Chef at Dunes. Uh, one of the best ways to win in the deck here is swing out with a Chef at Dunes activated or multiple Chef at Dunes activated. Again, we pay for Sacrifice a Dedrick. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Activate this ability anytime you could cast a Sorcery. So this is gonna be your great like alpha swing at the end of the game when you have like, I don't know, five to seven cats on the battlefield. It's just a great way to, uh, to win the match. Moving on, we have four Sun Petal Grove. This is a great buddy land for us coming in untapped. If we control a forest or planes, it taps for green 
green or white. Again, Sun Petal Grove is just a great dual land for us. Then we have seven forest and five planes, and that is the full 60. Basically, the entire setup here of the deck is to make sure we play our cats as quickly as possible, get our Vanquisher's Banner up as a great win condition, get out the Regal Caracals for the pumps, uh, get some Sh Shaper Sanctuary and Lifecrafter Bestiary to kind of get some card advantage, and again, play out our entire board to swing for the win. But let's say we're up against a heavier removal strategy, let's say we're up against a, a strategy with a lot of uh, board wipes, or let's say we're up against a more control-heavy strategy or a scare God, we're having trouble dealing with that. Let's go over the sideboard here. We have two Fragmentized. This is going to be a great way to get rid of the initial artifact uh, for the Godfrey's Gift decks. This is going to be a great way to get rid of any kind of Scrap Heap Scrounger that we don't like, or any kind of Heart of Kieran, things like that. But also get rid of an enchantment like Cast Out, Ixalan's Binding, or even Gideon's Intervention. So Fragmentized is a fantastic card for us. Even though it is a sorcery, it's still a fantastic removal spell for us to make sure we can kind of move our strategy forward. Next up, we have One Life Goes On. Uh, this is a great way to kind of go up against a um, Ramen up red strategy, gain some life, hopefully get them into top deck mode so we can kind of come back from the dead uh, and uh, continue our strategy out. Now, the deck has a lot of passive life gain by itself, thanks to Regal Caracol and Dorn Pouncer, or uh, just the Sacred Cat itself, but life goes on. Just being a one of in the sideboard is just enough for me to be happy about it, to make sure I can kind of board it in over something else, like maybe a uh, life after best year or something like that, uh, so we can kind of continue to last out the match by turn four or five, because that's going to be like the crucial turns for a round up red strategy. Next up, we have two heroic intervention. Board wipes in the format are ridiculous and they're everywhere. And blue white approach has fumigates for days. So heroic intervention is gonna be a great way to uh, make sure our creatures get hexproof and indestructible. Uh, so it's gonna be a great way to kind of continue to press forward our advantage as they tap out for five mana on turn five or six. Uh, and yeah, just a fantastic card overall. Next up, we have two natural obsolescence. Uh, this is a great way to shut down a scrap heap scrounger strategy, any kind of heart of Kieran, any kind of a Godfrey's gift, any artifact we don't wanna deal with, torrential gear. Hulk, including this as well. Uh, putting it on the bottom of the library actually helps us even more for a Scrap Heap Scrounger because it doesn't put it into the graveyard, which is actually where we don't want it to go. We want it to go either into exile or at the bottom of our opponent's library. Natural Obsolescence helps us do that at instant speed. Moving on from Natural Obsolescence, though, we have two Crushing Canopy. Again, we have a lot of flyers in the format like Angel of Invention and Glory Bringer, and Crushing Canopy is a three mana instant where we can destroy target creature with flying or destroy target enchantment. So against the like Angel of Invention God, God for us gift deck, this is a great way to get rid of that. That, uh, but it's also a great way to deal with a glory bringer in Ramen Up Red. So, Crushing Canopy is a fantastic card for a sideboard strategy. Moving on from this, we have Gideon's Intervention, a four mana enchantment. As Gideon's Intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponent can't cast spells with a chosen name. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanent you control by sources with a chosen name. So, Gideon's Intervention is actually kind of a pseudo removal spell for a Scarab God if we need it to be, or any kind of a Vraska, Relic Seeker, Chandra, uh, Torture Defiance, anything like that that we don't want kind of coming down or being cast cast out early, cast out, <laughs> we can cast it out too, but I think Gideon's Intervention is a bit better in helping him not be able to cast it at all. Again, since Black-Blue Control has a lot harder time dealing with enchantments, if they do hit the battlefield, Gideon's Intervention is basically just a straight removal spell against a uh, Scarab God or Torrential Gear Hulk or something like that. So, fantastic card, and definitely a two of, might even be a three or four of in the sideboard. Moving on, we have two Ixalan's Binding. This is another kind of pseudo removal spell, just like Gideon's Intervention, uh, because if it does hit the battlefield, we can exile it and make sure that they can't cast follow-up spells of the same name. So this is again for a Scarab God situation because that card is just ridiculous and I keep mentioning it, but again, Scarab God is insane. So if it hits the battlefield, you'll want to a Gideon's Intervention or Ixalan Binding as soon as possible. Uh, and with these two cards, you can definitely do that. Uh, moving on, we have two Settle the Wreckage. So a lot of the aggressive strategies right now go really wide, like the Abzon Token strategy, or maybe even the Round Up Red strategy. While that may not go incredibly wide, it does go incredibly fast and getting to four mana, holding up Settle the Wreckage and making sure that they get all their creatures exiled is a great way to deal with a Hazoret, deal with a Scarab God, deal with any kind of God that's giving us trouble like Ronas as well, but also perhaps a uh, Abzan token strategy with lots of vampire tokens attacking in or servo tokens and that kind of stuff. So Settle the Wreckage is a great way to deal with that. Even though they do get some mana as well and thin their deck, uh, it's not really that important in the mid to late game and I think Settle the Wreckage is good for that. But that is the full 75 guys. Let's go to the list right here. On mtgotraders.com it's actually coming to about 42 tickets, which is a lot cheaper than I thought it was was thanks to a metallic mimic, things like that. Uh, but on paper, it's actually coming to about a, around $142 uh, on paper. So I could kind of see that there as well. Uh, and of course, that's due to things like metallic mimic, regal caracal, and settle the wreckage because it is a bit more, uh, as well as kind of the dual lands like sun petal grove. Um, that's about $10, I think, on paper. Uh, but overall, the entire strategy is about playing out your sacred cats, your adorn pouncers, your mimics, your sapopards, your pride sovereigns, your caracals, and just swing for the win with a vanquisher's banner or a chef at dunes. But that is it for the video, 
guys. Let me know what you think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate some responses, and I'm always responding back as often as I can. As always, guys, like it if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure to hit the bell right beside the subscription button to know when we upload a new video on the, on the channel, and so you know when we go live on the stream right here on YouTube. But that's all I got for you today, guys. I will see you in the next video. Thank you